mate. How are you? <laughs> Here we are in uh, Orshova, in uh, on the Serbian border on the Danube River, and we just made it here uh, on a pair of cylinders that uh, that uh, you were involved in in uh, and did a lot of modifying to, and we're here with the report of uh, of how that went. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, it was a pretty good day. Uh, my own bike is finally kind of dialed in correctly, uh, and it performs extremely well. Um, with everything except full wide open throttle, and I still haven't figured out the jetting for that. But uh, aside from that, I don't know, it's great. I'm very, very pleased with the Milosi 221 Sport, which is actually was the 210 with the 2.5 millimeter head gasket or one and a half millimeter head gasket, whatever that head gasket was. It's great, it's got more power than I need. Mm. Uh, it frightens me, um, and I'm pretty pleased. But uh, the more interesting thing is what's going on uh, with Brett's bike, Brett and Margo's bike, which is also pretty damn good. And I had, a, I had the chance to ride it a little bit today, and it is the touring bike I wish I had 10 years ago when I did my big trip. So, I don't know, I'm very, very impressed with the work. It feels like it's got, I don't know, 15, 15 horsepower, maybe I 16. Reckon, yeah, yeah, I think it'd be around there for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I don't know, we switched bikes earlier today and it was uh, it was really, really damn interesting to feel just how different two Vespas could be. Like the same mm. base model. Mm. You had your Olin shocks, you had all that weight on the front, mm -hmm. which I, yeah. I really, Forgot how yeah. safe that makes you feel. Yeah, it's planted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't get the front wheels skittering all over the place. Yeah. Um, but uh, my own bike is um, is a different beast now, and it's almost like I almost wish it wasn't so twitchy, and and mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of lost its Vespa characteristics a little bit. If that makes any sense. I don't know. What was your feeling about it? I think it's the biggest difference. What I noticed is that that the, the the Molossi kit, it, when they both get into the top end, they're both quick. The o tune motor screams from six to almost eight thousand, you know. But it's that that point from four thousand to six thousand where the Molossi wants to go. It's really powerful, and whereas the the o tune motor is 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 not sort of throbbing and, and and sort of wanting to rev up more. It just sits there like lazy, like the original engine. But then it's just much smoother than the original engine. But the Molossi is is chomping at the bit to to sort yeah. of get moving it's yeah. like a you know it's not like it's a screamer it's not it's just really talky in that yep. in in that rev range and, and it it's it's not such a lazy motor touring motor it's lost that yeah that that puddle on laziness yeah um that i think the original motor has i think the o-tune motor just makes the original motor better and i had the original the o-tune cylinder on before this one the the version one that that FMP built and it was it did 40,000 Ks and this one's better again this one has more yeah. top end and I think different yeah. your bike your your yeah. O2 motor was the smoothest I've ever ridden yeah, uh, yeah. The, the crank even though it's got what 35,000 on it oh uh, more that yeah. crank yeah the and, and there were some questions about the tolerance within the uh, gudgeon pin yeah uh, small end bearing yeah all with all that it's, it's yeah. that is a very very smooth power plant it is and it, it ate a circlip um, because the last piston was just in there too long, which was in there for 40,000 k's and, and it dropped the circlip. So the rotary pad is pretty scarred up and it still runs like, you wouldn't yeah. even know. It's, um, yeah, I was it's, impressed. I was yeah. like, I mean, so when we were running our own bikes earlier, I was giving mine the beans and, uh, and these guys, including Margo here. Mm. Uh, so two people and their around the world luggage were able to keep up. Now that has a lot to do with your more sure-footed suspending, your greater yeah. experience, probably your slightly bigger balls, and uh, <laughs> able to just just ring it out and keep up. With... Suspension, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, really suspension. That 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 with the islands in there, and the islands are pretty uncomfortable if it, if it's a rough road, but but if it if it's open road, windy, you can hook it in like a motorbike. You can really the front end is set up really solid, and you can. If it's a downhill run, you can you can overtake big bikes. You can just pitch it into a corner. Yeah. You know, and you can, you can trail break into a corner and just take off. 
Yeah. Um, he is so confident at the front end, and I think it's a lot of that suspension. Yeah. I love I love my suspension, yeah. the new Velocity Sports that I got. Um, they're great, but yeah. as, as you were pointing out, they're, they're comfortable. Yeah. They're very comfortable. Yeah. And they do float around. They're at their weakest setting. I haven't played with tightening them up, mm. uh, but uh, but when I switched to yours, I did get this. It felt like a rock. Yeah, it was, it was so solid, and even when you're coming onto those construction areas where the the surface had been graded mm -hmm. with those yeah. undulating rifts, yeah. on mine with the um, Heidenau uh, K80s that yeah. I'm running, yeah. uh, they would they would tram line yeah. you know, in the tiny little grooves, and it yeah. was really disconcerting. Yeah, you feel yeah, I've had them on before. Twitching, and your bike. Yeah, but the K58s are better with that. Too. Yeah, yeah. it just it just yeah. you like a tank. Yeah, it is, and also too, the geometry's been changed a little bit because the back shock is longer. It's been shortened because the Allens doesn't fit, but it's still about 25 mil an inch longer than the standard. So by being longer, it's slightly changed the wheelbase, yep. and then, so the geometry's um, a little bit. So it's it, it sort of steers a bit quicker, but but because the suspension's set up so well, it's got that stability in there. It's, yeah. it, it really, it, it's a game changer. The suspension on Vespers, I reckon. Yeah, that's, um, a, like, that's, a, that's you know, the traditional weakest point of these, yeah. these silly little bikes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yours is far more comfortable on rough roads. We've also got the back shock set up for two people. It's if you're on there alone, it is brutally harsh. On, yeah. you, it bucks off. Yeah, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> feelings in your teeth. Yeah, it's, it. it can be really hard. <laughs> but but the most yeah. important thing is yeah. it doesn't feel dangerous. No, it, it, yeah. it, it feels it's very much the opposite. Really. It Solid. feels yeah. like you can, you know, and, and often we sort of playing around on some roads if we're sort of bored and the road surface is good and I'll try and, and, and just see how fast you can go without touching the brakes through some mm -hmm. some nice windy. It's really it's really interesting how how hard you can pitch into a corner and yeah. not lose the front on it. If, yeah. You know, which is which is amazing for a Vespa that it's got that, you know. And um, So what, what's interesting about jetting? So we've both got the same carb. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still trying to figure out. I think I. You were saying that you think my, at the high RPMs, mine is still a little bit too rich. I think so. That's how. It, yeah, it feels. And I'm running at 130. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yours is now on a 122. It's a 122 today. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, it's pulling 500 RPM more than it did with a 125. Yeah. Um, but also cleaned up the mid range an awful lot. It, you, you rode it before. Yeah, it was yeah. running like. A, like a dog in there. Just cruising today on that bike, it was it was just it was really really damn impressive. Yeah. Now I don't know. There was a butterfly uh, cut done to the exhaust port. I don't know if you can feel what is what is that intended to do. Well, he's opened up the top of the exhaust port. is a little bit wider and sort of lower down. It's sort of a funny funny shape now. But it, it, I think the idea is that that you it, it gives you more top end, but you are keeping the some more mid, without losing all the bottom end. So. Um, more exhaust port time without losing that. So it's a compromise, like not a compromise. Yeah, like the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. it's still the, the O-tune cylinder I had before the version one um, that he made was it, it had a lot more punch, probably around four to five. But that at the time, that's what I said I asked for yep. because we were spending more time in uh, like North Africa and where the roads were slower and we we're sort of on that mid range a lot more up up to Norway and this and that mountain roads. Sort of wanted that grunt for two people. Um, to get uphill, but so this one's a little bit weaker there for sure. It's a touch weaker now. Mm. Maybe with the jetting a bit more, I can sort of get a bit more out of that. But 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 I like this because the biggest difference I noticed today is that you can rev it to almost eight grand mm. in third gear. So if we're up a up a steep hill somewhere, a lot of the time where it won't pull forth or into the headwind today, yeah, yeah. Um, I can still do, you know. 80 k's an hour or whatever it is in third, so it's not dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Whereas with the cylinder before it, it would only pull, I don't know, 7,000 comfortably uphill. Um, so you're sort of, or, or six and a half even, because the power was lower down. So it could get a bit dangerous sometimes, especially yeah. in Europe where the roads are a bit faster. That's a really interesting, like, you know, like, so you have like, <laughs> when you think about these setups, you've got, so like your bike is good now when you've got a hill or a headwind and you you have to go into third, yeah. But you still you don't want to be slow as shit, so you, yeah. You can still yeah. do eighty, ninety, yeah. and third. Yeah, I held it today, and it's a brand new motor with new rings, yeah. which is, and um, the braking period didn't last very long. I held it today at oh, seven seven thousand seven hundred up that big hill behind you, mm -hmm. the whole way up that hill, 
which was a couple of kilometres long, and yeah. just pfft, no worries, just purred up there. Yeah. And, and, you know. This has nothing to do with the motor, but there's, there's also, it's so interesting when you hop on somebody else's bike and you see how things are set up. Yeah. And so yeah. my uh, uh, front brake has had problems, and I'm, I, I couldn't get the damn <laughs> uh, fluid to bleed through the, uh, yeah. the new um, reservoir that I got. Um, I was running a new master cylinder, but uh, and I'll get to that eventually. So I've got a pretty crappy front brake. It functions, but not great. Not really. Yeah. Your back works at least. Yeah, the back works, and that's <laughs> the most interesting thing. So you've got a great front brake. Yeah. But your back brake sucks. Yeah. It's it, a terrible. It's been know. ongoing. It, yeah. It's been. We've been. Look, I've changed. You know, we've changed a lot of. Um, this is almost the best it's been. We've changed a lot of shoes and this and that. But what seems to be, I think, happening because every time I open it up, it's the same thing. Is that with two people. On mountain roads now we've just come out of um, Switzerland and, and France in the mountains there mm -hmm. and what happens on the mountain roads is the brake dust just gums up the it just clogs up the material okay and every time you, if you cut some grooves or whatever and sandpaper them down yep. they're great for a while and yep. then again mountain roads with two people and luggage yep. it just so much brake dust comes out of there yeah that it's ongoing now it's all gummed up yeah these pads are the best I've these shoes are the best I've had that's the best they've worked yep. yeah but I've, I've yeah. noticed, like even the pedal, though, like I like I find that the pedal is not. Yeah, it's like crunchy. Yeah. 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 That, I think so that's the shitty SIP. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cable, the, the yeah. low quality uh, <laughs> third party cable that's in there. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I've just given up with it. The front brake is is got a really nice progression. Um, yeah. So you can sort of feel it's got a lot oh, of. It's not just on yeah. off. It's really yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, it's like it came out of the factory. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's. Yeah, probably they have great pads in there at the moment. That, I, I'm only single. That's yeah. the only thing with your bike that yeah. if if I had to drive it somewhere, it's the only thing I yeah. would chase down is yeah. that rear brake. So yeah. I'm used to having a good rear brake yeah. because yeah. my front brake sucks. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's for it. sure. And wet roads and gravel, you know, you want yeah. the back right, you know, because you don't want to get into the front too much on the scooter. So it oh. makes a huge for sure. But I've sort of given up with it now. I'm sick of cleaning it. I'm sick of seeing it. I just, mm. you know, it is what it is. And just leave it. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. You know, it's it's. But I, I knew guys in Brazil scootering around. They would, um, they would just disconnect the front brake. Yeah. It, the, the, the original drum yeah, front brake. Indo is same. It's, yeah. yeah. It's useless. It, it, it yeah. doesn't do shit. So they would rely yeah. on the rear brake for yeah. everything. Ours is the first Vespa, and only since the last five thousand k since I sort of bled it and put nice new pads in and cleaned the master cylinder out. That it's got the most progressive feel, mm. you know, through there where you can really sort of take it right to the limit set up and then you know yeah and it, it's really, beautiful but i think the island's on the front too makes a big difference because it's giving you more grip through mm. through this you know because good suspension you know i think it, yeah. it helps braking a lot too um helps that grip you know, yeah, for sure if we were if, if we were to, to to summarize like I, I think today was a really good day yeah it's nice uh, right. your brand new brand new build uh with a lot of custom modifications by the mm. the indomitable the inestimable Mr. Freak Moped, and uh, it, it works. Yeah, it worked great. Oh, for sure. That yeah. cylinder's magic, mate. Yeah. Seriously, don't you? it's amazing that yeah. that's a that's the iron cylinder. That when you ride a stock, it's amazing. That's the same. It's hard to believe that's yeah, the same yeah. motor. Just one guy with a Dremel. Yeah, can, can make it. Yeah, it really, really is. Yeah. I mean, the Molossi's something totally, totally different. But he, even yeah. my Molossi's been modified. Yeah, it's fast. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's no, but he, he yeah. opened up the exhaust port. I think he lowered the timings. Yeah, and, yeah it's it's quick. It's, yeah, yeah. I was shocked how quick it is. When you take off, it's bonkers quick compared to even the O tuned. And you can't even compare yeah. them. What it, my my favorite thing from uh, the the best thing about mine right now is that. So I've lost a I so I've lost a lot of top speed from the previous uh, Polini touring kit that I had set up with the SIP Road Two, uh, and I could I could wind, just hold that at a very high speed all day. Yeah. Um, but getting up to that speed wasn't so much fun. Mm. And this one I can I feel like I could probably cruise comfortably at 120, maybe yeah. one, like 115, 120. Yeah, I reckon all day. Um, but. The, the stuff where most of us spend our time, which is between like say 70 and 100, yeah, you just do it in fourth year. Yeah. And it's got all of, you don't, you're not constantly just, yeah. it's just, you're just going yeah. fourth. Yeah. It's That's like, a, it's yeah. almost like an automatic scooter at that yeah. point. That was a big difference that I noticed on, on mine, you've got to keep knocking it back, screaming it to get the revs high enough. Yeah. So when you drop down, the overlap is enough to pull forth. Your, yeah. your bike, you don't have to do that at all. No. It'll pull from 4,000 up a hill with two of us, yeah. like straight uphill. 
like no worries. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Yours was still pretty good. I could tell it was way better than stock because we were going up that yeah. hill along the yeah. Danube, heading up to the Iron Gates, and it was like a three percent or two percent grade. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was holding it in fourth, and I was just seeing it. It was hanging on and hanging on, and it just slowly started to decelerate. So we could almost do it. Yeah. And there was a lot of wind. Yeah. Yeah. And, it was really windy. And too. a stock PX could not do that. No. No yeah. way. Yeah. There's no way. You, it, it's a. It, it, it's just like a much, much better version of the stock engine because it's still got that lazy attitude, but it just pulls. Yeah. It pulls so much smoother and harder. But let's talk about fuel economy. <laughs> let's, not, fuel let's, economy? Not. <laughs> <laughs> let's not. Let's <laughs> not. Let's not. Jeez. So one of the happy side effects, you know, as we all know, that um, of having a tuned motor is that when you have a like a, a like a mild tune, like a Molossi Sport. Uh, suddenly, you don't have to really rag on the throttle. Yeah. And you're you're cruising around at quarter quarter throttle. Yep. And yeah. I'm I'm what, what's my even with two of us. Yeah. yeah. And what's my what was my what was I per hundred kilometers? You were doing about you know four and a half liters at the most per hundred. Yeah. You know, which is you know considering the speeds today with the headwinds yeah. and the hills there, we were just I was amazed you know. Yeah, and I, yeah. I didn't I didn't know the effect would be so profound. Mm. And, uh, and on yours, because you were doing your regular speed, but you were hammering it. But you do have a probably a too big jet in it. Yeah, for the morning. But it's not yeah. a lot better now. The last tank, I mean, I was doing, oh, God, it was, you know, mid-sixes. And then now I've dropped down, it's doing about six and a half litres, 100, which is... Yeah, so you're doing like maybe 130 on a tank at high speed. In the wind. In the wind, with the two wind. people oh, in luggage. At best. Yeah. I mean, we, we've usually used a safe range of 100 but now your probably safe range is going to be you know what it's like with this petrol out here in servos and stuff yeah. we're probably more like 80 as a safe range yeah, yeah um but i don't know i've still got to jet it in a bit more but it feels pretty close now so I, hey if you do have to end up in moldova you've got like a gas station every uh, 500 meters albanian style <laughs> perfect <laughs> what's with all the gas stations yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well money yeah, yeah. i think you know <laughs> yeah. it's damn convenient yeah without insulting our albanian friends yeah. <laughs> i think they know as well <laughs> but yeah that's like the, that's the one downside though but i mean even if yours was bone stock though you'd still have some crap fuel economy right? we were look I, I took it off and even through the desert in australia where with, with wide open throttle, we were still mid sixes, seven. Um, near seven mm. some tanks, but that's wide open, yeah. like for the whole tank. Yeah, you know, um, at, in in Southeast Asia or whatever, it was a bit better because the speeds were a bit low. We've generally had, at the best, we get four and a half liters a hundred. Yeah, um, uh, average is five and a half, and the worst is six and a half. Yeah, so, and I think we're now we're probably half a liter over all those figures. But time, the engine's got to wear in a bit. The jetting, I've got to mess around. We, we might get back to stock, yeah. But but I don't know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And how long ago was it? Was it on this trip or this like? I know this is kind of an, uh, an interrupted, resumed trip. Was it this trip that you were taking that bike to um, those uh, military zones in the far northeast of India, uh, yeah. where you were driving down riverbeds? Yeah. Stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Arunachal Pradesh. Yeah. Um, and through Meghalaya and, and Nagaland and. Yeah. And out to Kibitu, um, and we were doing oh god, 10 12 hour days. We we're doing 100 k's. Like With the 10, two of you, 10 12 hour days. Two of you yeah. on a Vespa, yeah, and your luggage driving down riverbeds, yeah, in northeast India, yeah, and that makes sense. Fueling up wherever, whatever <laughs> bottles we can. There are no petrol stations, it's no. just bottles on the side of the road and drums, yeah. Or someone would stop and we'd say, Can we buy some petrol? and they we ran out twice. Yeah. I think we ran out twice in that region. We ran out heaps of times on the trip, but huh. I think twice in that region, and people just stop and give you what they have in the tank, and yeah, and but that's that was it. brutal riding. The yeah. roads, Arunachal Pradesh, the road. There, there's no roads. There's an there's one main road if you come out of Myanmar, around into mainland India, up near Nepal. But if you want to go to Arunachal Pradesh or, or you want to go and explore or it, or out to Kibitu, there's no roads in the north of. So you improvise and you take like the goat tracks and oh yeah, to military roads, um, but they're all made for big military trucks. So it's all it's yeah. and it's proper off road. It's not like fire trail smooth. It is just dirt bike territory. It's okay, it's brutal. And the Vespa did it. Yeah, it did it. Did yeah. it. Never complained. Um, yeah. Good clutch oil and Honda plates. Yeah. Um, we had the super strong clutch in there, and we never had a problem. I mean, 
um, yeah, running and, and you're on the clutch like, you know, yeah. two people on tracks, you're just hammering the clutch, absolutely hammering. My experience, I had an experience last month and this is not, uh, this is not like no man's land in India, but it's a, uh, but it was a temporary hill climb that I, Google Maps led me astray and I tried <laughs> to go over this hill north of Niche in southern Serbia and, uh, you know, I was in, I was in tractor ruts deep enough that the bike couldn't even fall over <laughs> and, and it's very 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 steep and the further I went the more I wished I'd turned around oh, Google Maps a couple hours back and uh, I couldn't believe it. there was one point where I was like oh, fuck it I'm just gonna ditch the bike and just walk out of here or something. <laughs> truck. and I talked about the hill though and with those slicks you know with the, the K80 the hiding out K80 slicks and I just put it in first and just kept it there and I climbed a very long way yeah. in sand. Yeah. Mm. I couldn't believe a Vespa could do that. Yeah, I was yeah. So, I was like laughing at the top. I couldn't <laughs> believe. I was like, I can't believe the bike just did that. Yeah. Vespas aren't supposed to be able to do that. For sure, we we, we met guys on big GSs in like in um in Pakistan, in Pakistan and, and through the desert there, and the roads just covered in sand. The highway, and you're under military escort. So you need to keep up with them, and those guys are flying in the desert, you know, yeah. doing like 90, 100, and you need to be right behind them. Um, so your bike was doing 90, 100 on yeah, this Yeah, through sandy. like sandy, just, just holding it through the sand, yeah, trying wow. to keep the weight off the front so hard on the throttle. Yeah. And we met guys on big bikes that, that struggled. We met halfway, and, and yeah. uh, we were like, what's the road like in the section you've done? Um, and they were like, oh, it's really difficult. And they said to us, like, what's the road like where you came? We said, oh, it wasn't too bad. And then when we went through the bit they'd come through, it was a lot easier than the other bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, sometimes it's an advantage on the, on the smaller bike, on the tracks too. Uh, yeah. I think sometimes it's easier than wrestling a big... Yeah, uh, 500 heavy pounds. Bike, yeah, yeah. And, and the first gear is really short, so you're not... Even though you're on and off the clutch, you're not on and off the clutch like yeah, you yeah. are on a big bike, really just... You've got to be feathering around. Right, it's not bike. crawling, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the Vespa first gear is a walking speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think yeah. it's... And I really like the, the long fourth. I know a lot of people put the short fourth, but yeah, I like the feeling of mm -hmm. the long fourth when it snicks in from third to fourth and yeah. you've got that... Yeah, and especially yeah. you have to ring out third as far as you can go and hit that fourth. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. yeah. If you, you know, I sort of... I, I'm denied with change. Mm. Which you probably heard. I, I tried the I tried the short fourth because I read it somewhere on the internet that you have to do that. Yeah. And then I realized that um, with with like even a mild state of tune, you don't need that. Yeah. 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 You really don't. Like you don't yeah. have to ring it up. You 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 can you can hit that longer fourth at five thousand RPM or forty five hundred, and it's fine. It'll climb yeah. over the hump or onto the. I like the feeling of when you get into that fourth. It sort of you know, around five thousand, five and a half thousand, and it just sits there and pulls along at that. We also, we tried a um, 21 tooth um, clutch sprocket off a PX150, whatever they are, that, that mates up. It makes a little bit of fine, but it, and I just didn't like the reviness all of a sudden of it. It lost that lazy yeah, that yeah. sort of. Could you tell that I have the 24 tooth? No, yeah. didn't even realize, yeah. wow. Yeah. It just pulls out, eh? yeah. Even with the twenty four tooth. Really? I didn't, yeah. no, I didn't realize it. I could I could feel your I could feel your twenty three tooth. I noticed your revs are lower. When you were moving along, we were at one point there and I thought, Oh, you've got to be doing about ninety and the revs were and I know I, I noticed the revs were too low and I yeah. thought, Oh, maybe it's just the, the engine or yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Uh, no, I, 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 I wanna see what happens when you go lower. If you can get a yeah. one of those what is it, sixty yeah. Sixty two the primary gear you Yeah, can, yeah, sixty two with the Yeah, to yeah. lengthen it. Yeah. Just like really lengthen it. Yeah, because I, no, I didn't even realize at all. Wouldn't that be great, though, if yeah. you could cruise <laughs> in fourth gear at, like, 90, and the engine wouldn't, would sound like, uh... The problem with the Molossi kit, though, is around 4,000, you should just, it's too loping for, maybe I'm, I think I'm just used to the original cylinder, but it, it and I don't know if it's a problem, if, it's not a problem if you're on the gas, but yeah. if you're just sort of ticking along on sort of average roads, it sort of wants to go quicker than that yeah, yeah. 4,500, you, you need to be going... Yeah, there's a sweet spot around 55 or is 6. Is that where it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's sort of... So you, oh, it's, it's, around, just it's around 6, the top of the power, like six I think, is the top of that power band, probably. Only. I, I, uh -huh. I've never dynoed it, but I think yeah. it's around 58 and 6 is yeah. the, the top of the, top of the power band, uh -huh. and then close to it, and then it's a great feeling to have yet more in that in that Yeah, year, you know? yeah, in that... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, would, I would love, though. I just... Uh, but I mean, today's faster, right. <laughs> faster, faster. But, I think, but slower, slower, because today we were on crap roads. I mean, that road, yeah. the road along the Danube yeah. here on, on the Serbian side uh, is a great road. Yeah. 
it's kind of like sweeping. And yeah, it's really cool, but yeah. it's it's been patched over so many it's times. Kind of, it was a shitter. It was like the construction bits were. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that kind yeah. of stuff. But yeah. but but the point is, is that at times like that, it's only when you have a, a world of perfect roads all the time mm. that you have that oh, I got to go faster. Yeah, and and you know, remember at the end, it became perfectly paved again. Yeah, yeah, and then suddenly it's like, oh, okay, okay, now. Now I would benefit from yeah, longer. Yeah, day. yeah, yeah, for sure. Then it all works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, totally, you're right. It probably depends on country though, because like I don't know, Canada or Australia or whatever. That's a whole other discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a whole other discussion. Yeah, France, yeah, Italy, when, Germany. When, whatever, you're, when you're yeah. talking with your Vespa buddies in the yeah. states or like Germany, and yeah, they live in a different world. Yeah, they, totally. They, they live with uh, very good pavement. Yeah, and, and if you took those bikes like through Asia or or you know um, Central Asia or whatever. Or Africa, it, it'd be a pig probably. A lot of those bikes, they'd be pigs. They'd yeah. Be, it'd just be a, a you know, the, the power would be in the wrong spot. And, and yeah, you know. yeah. So maybe like my length, my gear lengthening obsession is a dead end. You know, maybe maybe I should stop thinking and just leave everything as it is and just enjoy it. I reckon I. I, 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 I <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I don't think the roads around this part of the world either. Are, you know, if you want to be on the back roads, you know, if you're going to yeah. be around. Oh, Bosnia or Albania, this and that. Jeez, I mean, the they can be a bit rough. Yeah, <laughs> they get worse in Russia. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You've seen? Have you ridden India? You've seen the the state? I've ridden in Ukraine before, yeah. and that yeah, the roads. Well, it was a long time ago, but, yeah. but the roads were, you know, a lot of big trucks. So the potholes are truck sized, yeah. truck diameter. No <laughs> pothole thing. Well, here we are in Armenia, and I can, all I can say is the state of affairs with the roads here is night and day from. 15 years ago yeah or yeah. 18 years ago yeah. 18 years ago every road was a pothole surface of the moon yeah disaster yeah. and now they've just paved everything and yeah. if you want to see the remaining of old you really have to go onto some small back roads and then you can find the yeah. the, the garbage roads um, yeah. but anyway yeah. I think we've exhausted this I don't even know if my camera my phone is still recording um, <laughs> but anyway uh, thanks Mr. Freak Moped and uh, I hope this has been an illuminating discussion. Yeah, good engine, mate. Thank you very much. It's a beauty. Um, Paul's ass. Thank you. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you very much for the reporting work and uh, getting all that stuff over here to the, the Balkans. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay. Cheers.